Talking to us about water sanitation and hygiene is Patricia Mwema. Welcome to the show. Thank you. You know, <laughs> when you talk about water sanitation and hygiene, it, it feels it is everything that we studied. It's everything that we are told. But then in the midst of all of that, mm -hmm. of knowing what we need to do or what we need, mm -hmm. it is not available for everybody. Very true. That's the sad truth that despite the fact that this is it should be one of the most basic necessities that yeah. we should have access to mm -hmm. clean water quality water actually up to 63 percent of kenyans the last uh, our last evaluation on our, where we are currently with the mdg post 2015 63 percent of kenyans have poor access to sanitation services including good water quality so it's 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 the numbers are really shocking that despite the fact that we know this is something that we need to improve the quality of life mm -hmm. to improve the quality of health that we have yes. it is still not being implemented fully both at the individual level and even at the national level in institutions yeah, Patricia, you speak so passionately about this <laughs> and maybe you can introduce yourself to the people so that we understand where you're coming from and why you are a voice of authority when it comes to water, um, sanitation and hygiene. Okay, my name is Patricia, mm -hmm. Patricia Mwema. I'm a community health specialist, also a public health analyst. I do monitoring and evaluation of public health policies. Ah, okay. Yes. That means in the creation of them and yes. implementing of them and how... Yes. You know how that is going if it was they are ever monitoring, monitoring and as well. implementation, mm -hmm. the whole cycle back. Okay. Until so we fully ensure that the policies set are actually working mm -hmm. effectively and efficiently. Is just on the water is it just on the water and sanitation bit of it, the hygiene bit of it, or is it everything that involves community? Communities, everything that involves community. And what would that From be? maternal mm -hmm. and child health awareness ah. to water, health and sanitation, to nutrition, all that we consider that in our public health. And I think you need to come back because <laughs> you mentioned something that is so important, something we've lost so many moms, uh, so True. many children. So mm -hmm. I think that's a conversation for another day. Yes. Today we're talking about, you know, water sanitation and hygiene. And what does mm -hmm. that mean? you know basically water sanitation when you talk about water sanitation and hygiene those these are three different components but okay. you cannot tackle one without handling another one okay. the other so when we talk about uh, sa sanitation and hygiene hygiene practically means the set of guidelines or activities or practices <laughs> that you carry out or you perform to ensure good health okay on your perspective mm -hmm. that can be from an uh, individual perspective mm -hmm. that is personal hygiene mm -hmm. to the household community mm -hmm. and institution when it comes now to sanitation sanitation is more about the facilities the implementation of facilities to ensure hygienic processes and conditions to limit contact between you as a person and hazardous waste or materials from around you and this is mostly to promote health and environmental integrity okay mm. and when we talk about this is is it the same is the level of this is good this is clean the quality is the same is this the same across or are there places where what i would consider not hygienic somebody else is like but we've been here we've been living like this does that make it okay because they're used to it or they deserve better no actually w uh, when you talk about uh, things such as sanitation mm -hmm. most of the times you'd find that poor access to some of these basic sanitation facilities mm -hmm. creates people to live in a cocoon or in a norm where this is normal Mm. Like places, there are places at this day and era, people still do the open defecation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for them, it might sound normal because there's no other alternative. But for someone mm -hmm. like us here, mm -hmm. that you have access to such mm -hmm. services, to such facilities, mm -hmm. it is not normal. So up to some point, the environment that you're living in mm -hmm. and even your psychological well-being and perception can actually affect what you consider yes. to be of quality and not of quality when it comes to hygiene the standards may vary okay. but should not be that much of a difference okay yes. and i'm happy that we're having this conversation today because it puts you at a place to look at your environment are you doing something that is helping 
in making sure that your environment, your community is at a better state? Is it cleaner? Is there, is there more hygiene? Or are you part of the process that is actually, you know, not doing anything about this? If you have any questions whatsoever on how you can improve on what the things that you can do, anything about water sanitation and hygiene, please send them to us, triple one, triple four, triple one, because Patricia will be here to answer all of those questions. And if you are wondering where you can find us, we are at, on Zuku, we are on channel 53, and Azam to Kopale 338 on Signet, we are on free to air. So when we're talking about sanitation and clean, and I love what you've just said, mm. there are some things that we do as humans and i like that you talked about open defecation because kuna kwengine inaitwa flying it's like a flying toilet, toilet <laughs> where you just you know do your thing and then you just throw and then it goes wherever mm -hmm. but now that is how they've grown up that is what mm -hmm. they have seen mm -hmm. so who is supposed to come in and help the community at this level and when you see this who do you go to because now they do not have access to that facility for 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 there to be a difference for example in when we want to stop something like you want to promote the use of improved latrines or to stop the use of open defecation or the flying toilets yes you need to consider human capacity when you talk about human capacity there's something called capacity building educate people health okay. promotion hygiene promotion tell them there's a most of the times you'll find that people do what they do because they don't know the repercussions so if you teach people, tell them when you do this, you stand to lose this. But when you do this, you stand to gain this. Then enable, mm -hmm. provide the sanitation facilities. Is it the latrines? Are you going to construct toilets? What are you actually going to do? If the problem is water, are you going to have water stations or water points from within the community? Then after you do that, you, you capacity build, you enable, mm -hmm. then you implement. You let them now, after you've trained them and you've given the services, you've provided for the facilities, mm -hmm. now you let them use the facilities for you to see the changes in the community. Okay. And we talk about the problems that are brought about without, for not having proper sanitation, proper hygiene. Mm -hmm. What are some of those things? For actually in Kenya right now, when we're looking at our MDGs and SDGs, yeah. A great majority of our mortality and mobility is excavated by the fact that poor sanitation, poor hygiene, poor water quality. Oh, goodness. Yes. Almost 63% of our disease burden. It's because of this one yes. thing. And we, I don't think we talk about it as much as we should. Yes. If we can improve on our hygiene, sanitation, and our quality of water, yes. we would see majority of these diseases. When you talk about things such as polio, yeah. you would ex people think polio is something uh, out of the blues. Y you don't link it to it can be as a result of poor hygienic conditions. Really? Yes. When you talk about things such as malaria, waterborne diseases, mm -hmm. all of those things are called or are caused or mostly influenced. They pose a poor water quality is as a is a risk factor for them. So when you talk about poor water quality, because you've been mentioning it a lot, mm -hmm. what are the standards of knowing that this is good water, clean water? We have water boozers all over. In a letter, Maji, mm -hmm. how do I measure the quality of the water that I'm receiving in my house? Is there a way to do that? You really can't measure from the household level, but yes. what you can do, you can do, ensure at least the water that you're using at home, it is treated. Okay, that is if what I can do yes. in my home. Treat and boil. Mm -hmm. Even when it comes to foodstuffs. Mm -hmm. You get foodstuffs from market. Most people don't really recognize, but when you consider markets, like the big markets, toy yes. markets, such markets, mm, the big ones. Kikomba. Yes. Yes. Up to some point, they can be like a risk factor, a hazardous point. Because when you go there and you see how food is stored. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sometimes yes. like even Iko the vegetables. Yes. Yes. And definitely such a place, it's full of dirt. You don't know who's been yeah, walking there, what has been happening there. Mm -hmm. So for when you buy such vegetables or 
fruits mm -hmm. when you bring them at home one thing you can do at the household level to ensure your quality of water and food because mm -hmm. if your quality of water is down it's also going to temper with the quality, quality of food and even your food preparation methods so one thing you can do ensure you're using treated water how if do you we treat this water we have things such as water guard mm, okay, okay yeah where you can have that car small Kifuniko, the 5 ml, 10 ml yes. for a 20 liter jerry can. Mm. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you can boil your water. Or you can boil your water. Yes. That is the old traditional way yes. of doing it, which works. Yes, exactly. Yeah. If you're able to get, you know, iso mafuta ama makaya kufanya iyo kazi. But if mm -hmm. not, there's the other method as well, which works effectively. Yes. Effectively. From a okay. household level. We, we're in... Last year did the thing, right? Mm -hmm. And COVID came and <laughs> we were told we need to clean our hands. I don't mm -hmm. know how many times in a day. And as we are washing, we even mm -hmm. came up with a thing where the kids sing happy birthday to the end, mm -hmm. just to make sure that their hands are clean. So we're dealing with, first of all, atuna maji, depending mm -hmm. on where, mm -hmm. uko. Hakuna maji, these are the requirements. So COVID is also tied into water sanitation <laughs> and hygiene. And yeah. Patricia is in the thick of things when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. How then do you expect a whole society, community, to be able to fight this without access to water? I believe uh, the government and also non-governmental bodies and even yeah. institutions, we do have a role to play in that in the provision of water facilities and sanitation areas. When I mean sanitation areas, like toilets mm -hmm. with sink and water or yeah. a running tap, or you can, we have seen nowadays in some, some restaurants or some shops in town, you have the small jerry can with water and a soap there, yes. preferably liquid soap. Yes. <laughs> Let us, uh, not just because of COVID, I think COVID now made people realize we need to wash our hands. Oh, no, we stopped washing our hands. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it, it is a practice, it is a good practice that we should keep. And that happy birthday song, try to sing it twice. Not <laughs> once. Twice. Mm -hmm. Patricia, we have a question here for you, and you can mm -hmm. keep sending your questions. Triple one, triple four, triple one. That is our SMS line. Mm -hmm. And Asema, are the proponents of SDGs doing enough to ensure clean water and sanitation for all? by 2030? Yes, so far we have come a long way in mm -hmm. implementing our SDGs, but we are not fully there mm -hmm. when it comes to implementing. We have a bottleneck of issues when it comes to implementations, financing, and the monitoring and evaluation. Because for when the SDGs are set, they provided so, like a, a framework, mm -hmm. a policy mm -hmm. on how things will be done. For example, when it comes to the water and sanitation and hygiene, it's still part of our MDGs and SDGs. Yes. In Kenya, we have the Kenya Environmental Sanitation and Hygiene Policy that was supposed to run us from 2012 to 2013. Mm -hmm. And actually, interesting, when they did that report, they saw that we had for our post-MDGs, we had said by 2015, we were expecting at least we should have gotten to past 50% of our population having access to sanitation, wash services, mm -hmm. we call them wash. Wash services. Yes, water okay. sanitation and hygiene. Okay. But unfortunately, uh, we are a bit derailed from achieving that objective. And the, sad, and the sad part they were saying, uh -huh. if they were to calculate in terms of time, uh -huh. how much derailed, they were saying instead of having it accomplished by 2030, it will be by 2075. Excuse me? Yes. To that amount of derailment? Yes. 2075? Yes. And the problem, by the way, when it comes to these things, it is usually financing, monitoring and evaluation, and mm -hmm. even f mostly budgeting, which is also part of financing. Okay. When it comes to, for example, when it comes to such watch services mm -hmm. in Kenya and the devolution government, mm -hmm. we really don't have a clear framework on which ministry, which part of the government, is it the devolved government or the national government that is supposed to be handling this? Pra let's give a practical example. Okay. Even right now, uh, just a few months ago, a few weeks ago, it was raining heavily in mm -hmm. Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And you were seeing how the roads were. Yes. Water was all over the place. 
In fact, there were places where well we were having an overflow of the sewage system. Yes. And when you ask the county government, the county government is saying this is the role of the, the national, national government. government. But the national government is saying the funds have been devolved. This is supposed to be taken care of by the county government. Then we have other ministries. We have the ministries of health. We have the ministry for land, water and irrigation and other services. No one is really taking the blame thing. We were supposed to handle this. We were supposed to take care of garbage collection in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to take care of water drainage services in Nairobi. No one is really taking responsibilities. So such things and even when it comes to monitoring and evaluation, we set our, our goal to by 2030 are we carefully monitoring and evaluating our steps? Are we, are we, are we taking notes of this is what, where we are going? Yeah. This is where we are right now? Mm -hmm. This is what needed to be done as per this time? Do we have that? Wow. Tough questions. Those are some of the issues. Like it's easy to say by 2030, I want to own a jet. <laughs> what am I doing towards exactly. owning the jet? Exactly. What are you doing right now? When it comes to 2025, 20, ask yourself, I have like five years left to this goal. What have I done so far? Are we what doing have that? I achieved so far? Because when you talk about even the funds, who is, where, where, where are they coming from? And who are being given this amount of money mm -hmm. to just make sure there's water everywhere? Because during COVID, I saw so many um, non-governmental organizations just come out to provide the water yes. for communities that did not have. Mm -hmm. So that was during COVID. Exactly. So that means before that, when they were not getting extra help. Mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't, they really didn't have those services. And yeah. actually no one had... It is sad that when you go to the interior places of Kenya, people don't know the government or the Ministry of Health, but people know things like UNICEF. Yes. Or okay. World mm. Health Organization. Because mm. mm. most of these services, it's now the NGOs that are taking an active responsibility. Uh, just a few days ago, I was visiting a public school mm -hmm. uh, in Westlands, mm -hmm. and they had a, a hole uh, sanitation block, the toilets and the water and everything, and it was funded by UNICEF. And that was after the, the school was actually aired on TV, that the students did not have any water, even drinking water. And even the, the, the school was kind of comfortable, the administration, they were like telling the children, you just bring your water from home, just carry your own water. Oh my goodness. Now the question is, even if I'm to carry my own water, can I carry enough for the toilet, for, for washing, washing my, my hands, hands, for drinking? Yes. Can I carry that? It's impossible. That's why I, I say when it comes to our monitoring and evaluation, we need to start from before we get to the national level where we have achieved our SDGs, mm -hmm. we need to ask ourselves, are the community level? even at the organizational level like here when it comes to sanitation and hygiene do we have something called like gender responsive facilities what are those like i have once gone to a washroom a lady's washroom and i noticed that there were no sanitary beans, beans. okay even the toilet they were a bit like it was a latrine you know that one like you you you're like really minding your stuff before you end up being buried there <laughs> I feel you. I feel so you. So when, when, when we lack such facilities, mm. even for when it comes to ladies, we have our menstrual health management policy. When we lack to implement such basic frameworks, because yes. if we can implement that, because mm -hmm. some, somehow these policies, they kind of, they overlap and implement each other. If we can implement our policy on um, uh, MHM, Menstruation Hygiene Management. Mm -hmm. We implement that one on uh, san uh, environment, sanitation, and hygiene policy. If we can implement all those ones at the small scale, going up to our Vision 20, to our yeah. SDGs and our MDGs, it will make more sense. As compared to we're even lacking in implementing the small Patricia, I think we need you in our government or somewhere up there where you can call the shots directly. 
you know mm -hmm. because you have such valid points you you have traveled you've seen what is on the ground and mm -hmm. what we need mm -hmm. you're a specialist in this and that i don't know if and i'm sure there are others only i don't know if they get you know swallowed in into the system or the system is fighting them or not providing for them what it is that they need to just make life bearable at a bare minimum i think the problem is complacency ah. you get to a level where like okay, if it's happening yeah, in kawaida we okay, will okay. survive will manage mm. we even we are now we kind of make it it's now normal to go to a toilet without toilet paper and water yeah and it's a public school or it's a public fa service facility mm, mm. maybe it's a toilet in town and we assume the state of how things are because like <laughs> i was telling someone our toilets you can't just go there when you have these flat open shoes <laughs> it's very Oh God! It's like the a visuals. <laughs> I, but I I see what you mean, and mm. I don't know what would be your parting shot, or probably advice, maybe a call to action to everybody out there who's watching, or to the government, or the responsible ministries, mm -hmm. uh, or offices that should be handling this. And this is your camera, Patricia. Okay, for me, what I can say is this: when we talk about the SD, SDGs and MDGs, that is at a national level. Mm. And it might be a bit complex for you to, and you may be asking yourself, what role can I play? What, yes. act, what can I do? Mm -hmm. What I can advise someone is, you as a person, start at your household level. If we can implement these hygiene practices, these hygiene policies actively in our houses, mm. then we can also implement them in our communities. Absolutely. And if different communities are implementing this, then it, ca it can be easy to scale up to a national level. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much, Patricia. Thank you. It was lovely <laughs> having this conversation with you. Thank you. We're going to take a very short commercial break as you ponder on that because it starts with you, it starts with me, it starts with our households. As we think about that, we'll be right back after this break.